let me just go through this reasonably quickly. I don't mean to be uh, to labor or anything else, and I appreciate you being here. So let me just tell you a bit about what we do. Um, we're a, a lean consultancy company. Lean is often thought about as being process driven and trying to be processes and organizations, but it's as much about the people. Um, I worked in, in the years ago, that's now a bit interesting, but the company is about um, 15 consultants now, and we're working maybe about 40% with the food sector in Ireland, the UK, and a lot of work with um, meat processors, and hence we're here today um, to talk about what we do. Um, but what I want to talk about is this broader definition of lean. And um, most people, when we talk about lean, that know about it, assume that we're talking about improving processes and organizations. That's very true, but the most important part of improving processes and organizations is the people that design and work within those processes. And if those people are interested and motivated, then they will naturally learn and develop those processes. So more and more we put emphasis on how the people work within the processes, how they work with us, how we coach them to develop things themselves. So what I was going to talk about today is just what um, it takes to coach those people and develop those people. So this broader definition of lean is trying to make everybody better at what they do every day, a little bit better every day, and concentrating on developing the people and they will develop the processes. So changing behaviours and coaching is a big part of what we do in organisations. Um, this little picture here, this house is often used in our business to talk about um, how to improve things. So these are five questions I just want to talk about very briefly. And um, it's very important that everybody understands the purpose. Small organisations, big organisations need to know what the purpose of the organisation is. And it's not that we just define it once and that's it, you know, it can be up on the website for the next 10 years. You really have to be questioning all the time, what's the purpose and how every single individual connects to the organisation. And you'd be surprised how meaningful it is to people when they're actually asked, do you understand what the organisation is trying to achieve and can we talk about how you and your role actually helps that? And they go away with a pep in their step and very motivated by the fact that people were interested and explain to them how it all goes together. So they don't often see the whole. Um, then the next thing, number two there in the diagram, you can see it, the process improvement. Um, exactly how are we improving the work? It's all very well to say we want to improve the whole thing, but how is it improving? Exactly what are we going to change? Which process? What part of what people do? Again, it's amazing. It seems very obvious, but just concentrating on how to, what process to improve. Now, third, and this is the one that really I feel strongly about, building capability. The number of leaders of organizations that don't invest enough time in building the capability of the people. And it's as simple as, it's probably the only appreciating asset in a business, and it should be protected and nourished and grown all the time. But we spend more time worrying about the, the buildings and the and the inventories and not enough about the people. But it's absolutely crucial to the organization. Um, next, um, this is talked about a lot, but it's so, so important, the leadership behaviors and the management system. The management system about how the people get connected in and how we motivate them all the time. Uh, again, it's very easy to write down a couple of values and for the organization and a couple of beliefs of the organization, but for the key people to live those and to demonstrate them all the time, especially when the pressure comes on to stay consistent to the values of the organization. It's absolutely crucial, and everybody's watching the leaders all the time. Um, so I want to just talk about the, that part, the, the, the leadership behaviors, just for a couple of seconds. Um, the basic thinking mindset and assumptions of an organization are absolutely crucial for what we do. So we're asking them to become operationally excellent or organizationally excellent. Um, and if the leaders are leading by example, respecting people in every interaction that they have with them, always striving for improvement and encouraging long-term thinking. I mean, they're big asks when you're all the pressures of a business coming at you day in day out. Um, how do you know that it's, it's working right? Well, you'd see people in a coaching mode. The leaders of different discussions are more in a coaching mode than a telling mode. Um, there isn't a fear. And that's not that people aren't held accountable, but there isn't a fear as to what would the repercussions of a mistake. If people make habitual mistakes, that's a different issue. But if a mistake is made, it shouldn't be. 
it shouldn't be a big problem, and there shouldn't be too much blame. Um, so, um, one thing, I just, just as a little example, see that where we're talking about respect for all the people? Um, quite a large organization that I've worked with, um, I, I'm startled by how often when a meeting finishes, a couple of people just stay back, and the people that leave the room know they're going to be spoken about. You know, and how do they feel when they leave the room? But they know almost like there's going to be a little bit of a power as to what goes on. And it's such a habit, those people don't even realize they're doing it. And I'm there wondering, should I leave um, to, sh to show my leadership, or should I stay? Because everybody else will think I'm not part of the inner sanctum if I leave. You know, it's, it's amazing. Um, and you pointed out to them, and they kind of say, God, didn't realize we do that. Um, but those are the kinds of things you have to be very mindful of how you to respect people. Um, so just moving on then, um, responsibility. I don't, I'm not going to dwell on this too much. Um, there are various definitions of responsibility. Um, we have a little bit of a blog on our website that just explains all of these a little further, but it's a word I'm quite interested in because the, the bottom two of those, the personal responsibility in taking initiative um, is crucial to, to make change in an organization. Um, and if I just move on, I'm not even going to define the other four or talk about the other four. Um, personal responsibility, we're seeing less and less of this modern life. People seem to just leave it to others to take the responsibility and make things happen. It's everybody's job to take responsibility for their area or whatever they do. Be it that they're a forklift driver or that they're the managing director of the organization. They almost take responsibility for their sphere of influence. Um, there's not enough of that in the world today. Everybody's devolving the responsibility to others. So taking the personal responsibility, I'm going to talk about discipline just now, um, attitude and critical thinking. Um, so if I, just the, the word discipline, and don't worry too much about what I've written here. This is um, a mistake on my part. I apologize because when I was looking at this slide earlier, I say, actually, the message I wanted to say was really this kind of discipline except for the top two, which are more, well, we just say this kind of discipline is not what we're after. It's the personal discipline. If somebody says they're going to do something, then they should go ahead and do it, and do it on time, do it properly. It's that personal discipline, taking the responsibility of the personal discipline, not the discipline that we're used to, the military discipline, or the discipline that you remember from school, that kind of you know detention and things, the negative, the punishment. What, what we want is people to take responsibility and be disciplined, and to turn up for meetings on time, uh, pay attention at the meetings, leave on time, let people go to the, their next piece of business. It's that kind of discipline that's absolutely crucial. Now, moving on from that, I uh, just want to spend a couple of minutes on this. Attitude is so crucial in our business. There's this little triangle that I'm particularly taking with the dreaded drama triangle. An individual feels like a victim. You, you've all met those kinds of people that as soon as you meet them, they're always telling you why what you want them to do is too difficult or a problem or whatever. They're a victim to the whole thing. And we are the change that we're trying to do. We appear like persecutors to those people. Um, there's also the rescuer, the person that comes in and says, I'll do it, don't worry about them, I'll do it. And they take over all the responsibility and they disempower that, that victim and make the situation worse. That's a very, very difficult situation. And it's unbelievable how often that we come across that and see that happening. The antithesis of this is the empowerment triangle. The person themselves has to become the creator. Take the responsibility for their work area and what they're going to do about it, developing themselves and de helping develop the organizations. So they should become the creator. The change program or the a person that's asking them to change is challenging them, but challenging them in a very constructive way. You know, can we perform better tomorrow? Think of the sports coach, think of what's going to happen with the Irish team next week. They'll be challenging each other to do their best. And of course then the coach comes in. The coach is always asking them, to, questioning them, and asking them how can they do things differently? Can they think about it differently? Do they know exactly what the next step of change is? So that's what the, the empowerment triangle. And to be honest, if we can shift people or organizations from that dreaded drama triangle to the empowerment triangle, they're asking us, quick, come in and help me, show me what to do, whatever. The job changes from being moderately difficult to being absolutely simple and a pleasure. 
And honest to God, I, I could get up in the morning and I know which clients I go to and which part of which triangle, and whether I go to enjoy it or whether it's going to be hard work all day. It's, it's that simple, trying to just shift them. And when they shift, it's a delight. Now, finally then, um, this is missing an awful lot more and more these days. Um, just the six steps of critical thinking I want to draw your attention to. Um, the remembering and applying is done quite often and by a lot of people these days. The other four steps don't happen as much as they should anymore. Stopping to really understand what's going on, what the situation is, what's happening. Analyzing what's going on. Um, evaluating it or even just innovating and creating. People have almost switched off. They're just so busy with all the different things that are coming at them that they can remember stuff and they take pride in remembering stuff. They take pride in applying it quickly. But the critical approach to it isn't happening often enough. So those are a few ideas I wanted to share with you few people. <laughs> um, but it's, it's what it, it, will, it will be. It will be on the video, and I hope a few of them will get it. And so that, that's what I wanted to take people through today. Just a little bit of what we're seeing in change, and when we're trying to make change happen in organisations. And I could have talked about some of the process change that would be needed in organisations. That's the easy part. This is the hard part, and the more rewarding part. And thank you all very much, and I appreciate it, and well done. you listening. Thank you.